Hello, and thanks for tuning in on this first lecture on the rudiments of film scoring. If you're a student in my class, this lecture corresponds with week one of my scoring syllabus. So if you've stumbled across this video, keep in mind that it is just an overview, terms for the non-musicians out there, a suggestion of things to come, and maybe some mantras to live by. We will be looking at conceptual music terms that you need to know, but more importantly, we will be looking at things that you do not need to know. Music is a very human way of expressing emotions, but we've all been raised in a culture that insists that we must have talent or some magical ability to create music. Music is something that we can all commit to, like speech. You might feel difficulty in expressing your thoughts, but pretty much everyone possesses some ability to communicate effectively, and this course is about finding that voice using tones and rhythm. There are three rules that I would like you to live by as a film composer. Number one, attempt everything at least twice. Even an expert level artist will crash and make mistakes the first time out. Don't count the errors in your life from the very first attempt. Number two, anyone can write music. I mean, listen to what's out there now. Anyone can do this. No excuses. And number three, there's no such thing as tone deafness. There is something sort of popular and very defeatist about this statement. Saying this to yourself basically stops you from trying. So I don't want you to tell yourself that you are tone deaf anymore, because you're not. You might not recognize music the way a learned musician might know it, but everyone in this class is going to be able to say something intelligent about music by the time the class is over. Film music is not classical music, even though on the surface what we traditionally see as classical music looks very similar. Film music takes ideas from all different genres and styles of music and utilizes only that which helps tell the story that needs to be told. You should think of your music as a character in your movie that you have to create. In this class, we are concerned with three things, pitch, dynamics, and tone color. I want you to approach this class like a sound design class. You are going to be building musical cues that support what you see in the picture. Sometimes I'll be giving you some instruction, or a word, or an idea, and you're going to score some music to that. Eventually we're going to move on to picture, and I'll be sending you some picture that you're going to be adding music to. Musical performance is a lot like acting. You have to have something to react to. Picture, verbal directions, another performer. So the composing part of this class will just be that. I will start the process by giving you something from which to build and you will respond to that stimulus by replying in music. There's probably a bunch of words out there that you've heard musicians drop. I don't want you to worry about those things like major and minor, scales, harmony. That stuff doesn't really matter for right now. What I want you guys to explore is learning how to make music with your person, learning how to express yourself musically with your body. Here are some definitions. So you've probably heard the word note a lot, right? And a lot of people think that a musical note is the sound uh, of the note, and it really isn't. A note just pertains to written music. It's a designation of musical time. It is a musical event. In the old days, we used to denotate music with symbols that looked like this. Different software programs that we use to notate music now might have their own unique method of denotating musical tones and musical time. A pitch is a group of sounds that a particular culture holds in special regard. It's like a subjective psychoacoustical attribute of sound. When we hear two different pitches, as a comparative statement you could say one sounds higher than the other. If you're watching a horror movie and the heroine screams, you could say that what she has emitted from her voice was a high-pitched scream. All of us instinctively know what is defined as high and what is defined as low, even though those things are subjective and very difficult to measure. When you think of musical notes, you're actually talking about tones. A tone is a definite pitch, and in Western music, there are 12 distinct tones to a scale. A scale being a musical alphabet of sorts. When people talk about notes, they usually mean tones. An interval is the distance between two notes, like this. And range is like the distance between an instrument's highest possible note and its lowest possible note. Different human beings have different ranges to their voice. 
Some people might have a very narrow range to the variety of sound that they can emit from their body. Some people always speak in a high-pitched voice. There are a lot of people out there who have very low voices but are able to produce a falsetto voice. Those people might have a larger range. And I know you've heard the term scale before. You don't really have to know your scales to participate in this class, but a scale is an arbitrary ordering of sounds based on what a small group of people might consider usable or pleasant. Don't worry if you do not know how to play a musical instrument. These instruments that you see on screen are not the only types of instruments that you can use in film scoring today. I will be referring to some of these instruments, but you definitely don't have to know what they are and you definitely don't have to play them. If you know how to play a musical instrument already, that's great. You will find a lot of the things in this class to be easier. But through guided lectures, I'll be showing you how to interface with a digital audio workstation and to produce music as you would produce any type of media.